set a goal, you know, went for it, got referrals, 200 personal points. Congratulations, buddy. And, you know, we've got a gentleman that just hit regional director, and he also hit 200 personal points in the same, literally within 24 hours of it. And this guy, I've had so much fun working with him. He's an absolute champion. I remember signing him up as a representative. I remember the, the moment he said, let's just do this. And he's a regional director today. Mr. J Fest, everybody. Hi, Jeff. Thank you. Um, I, there's no way to describe how I've been feeling. The last 24 hours, I just, I, I feel like I'm in a, a different world right now. Um, but, you know, as I was going through my run to get to RD right now, I was thinking, I was reminiscing a lot. And I thought about what happened to me. And I think I am so much a product of the rock star system as I think about when I go back and words that we use too loosely, even like a sense of urgency, all of it came to roost in the last couple of months. And it all started when I met you. It was January 21st. And I came to that meeting. I signed up right then and there. But what happened before I got to that meeting is unimaginable in terms of our system. And what I want to stress on everybody is that they need to follow the system that we're all being trained to follow. I got invited by a brand new person. She did a halfway job of inviting me. And I said yes to something that I didn't really even know what I was saying yes to, and I never put it on my calendar. I was in a busy group of people when she asked me, Sunday came and I got a call from Melissa Street saying, hi, Jay, my, my name's Melissa. I'm so excited that you're coming to Linda's meeting on Monday. And she hung up and I'm I didn't take the phone call because it was a California call. I thought I was getting a robocall. And she hung up and I listened to the voicemail and I'm thinking to myself, what me, I couldn't even remember the meeting I said yes to or why I said that. I texted the person, I found the text. I text, I called her and I said, Linda, I said, why was I coming to this meeting? And she texted me back and said, remember what you're, you know, coming about, you know, electricity, phones, how to save money. I said, oh yeah, I'll be there. If Melissa hadn't made that phone call, I wouldn't be here today. I would have missed an opportunity of a lifetime. I met you that night. I wanted to start with my boys. We started the business and it wasn't easy. There were ups and downs. You know, it wasn't a, a road of roses here. And, you know, there were times where, you know, you sat me down and, you know, I was in a funk and we talked about different things. And I just kept going at it. Um, I went back and looked at it, Jeff. I had 18 PBRs, three PBZs. In that time, that's 21 meetings we had that you hosted for me. And out of that, I personally recruited 29 IBOs out of the 60 I've got. And I just kept, even when, uh, this is another thing I want to stress that, you know, when I was in a funk and I wasn't feeling right, and we've all been through it, I made sure I did not unplug out of the system. I made sure I went and went to a meeting, went to a training, because I knew that's when I would need it the most, and I just kept sticking it out. When I started, you know, getting, and there was a point in time where my personal points were up, or my customer points were up to around 450, and I was in a funk and you started saying to me, start texting me every morning, get on your back room, text me every morning how many customer points you've got. And so I did that for about a week. It went up and down, up and down. And I was getting embarrassed, so I stopped sending it to you. But I kept my own list, which I never told you I was keeping my own list. And what changed for me was the Zoom opportunity. 
I had a person that canceled on me twice in regular PBRs. The last one he canceled on me was in January. He cancels the day of the second time. Jay, I just don't have time to drive 45 minutes to your house. I know you're doing something that's interesting I want to hear about, but I just don't have the time. This is a very, very busy business guy. And the first Zoom meeting we had, when we couldn't have a PBR anymore, I called Michael up. I said, Mike, I said, I have an opportunity to get you on a Zoom call for 30 minutes. You're going to finally hear what I've been up to for a little over a year now. And he came to the Zoom call, signed up. He uh, bought three ID seals and it was electric bill. So in less than 24 hours, I had 25 points. And that took me from 450 up to 495. And then I smelt it. I was close enough at that point that I could feel it. And so what I did, out of all those PBRs that I ran, I probably have about 500 names on my list. I created a customer list, all highlighted, color-coded, went after it. And my, I, I learned a new definition of a sense of urgency. Because how many times do we talk about a sense of urgency in this business? We're always, you know, trying to create that sense of urgency. And I kind of, you know, dismissed it a little bit. But now I felt it. And, the re- and I wish that I had created the sense of urgency in the year that I've been part of ACM because I think I'd even be farther ahead. Because what happened is I got a real sense of urgency for the first time. When I smelt myself within 100 points of becoming a regional director, I could feel it. And the sense of urgency changed and the language changed and my approach changed. When I was calling somebody a week ago, asking them to become a customer and calling up and saying, can you do me a huge favor? As I got closer to my deadline that I wanted to do this, it became, can you do me a huge, huge favor? And as I got even closer, whoever my friend was I was talking to, I need a huge, huge favor. I mean, I need a huge favor. So the huges got bigger. The sense of urgency got bigger. And things like Bill was saying earlier, with the phone calls, things just started happening. I think I was persistent. I think I stuck to the game plan, the system, the rock star system. I'm here because of that system, and I don't know what else I can say. Yeah, you you exemplify persistence. Love everything that you said. But, guys, listen to this. Jay would not be an ECN today if if Melissa hadn't given her a confirmation, hadn't, hadn't given him a confirmation call. There were so many incredible lessons in that story. But everybody, round of applause for new RD, 200-point champion, Mr. J. Festa, defines persistence, defines work ethic. And Jay didn't talk much about what he did personally, but Jay's had massive success in the insurance business. Been a business owner for 30 years, uh, but today as a regional director in ECN, and so proud of you, buddy. And guys, now I get a chance to get myself out of the way and bring up the number one senior vice president in the world in ECN who's on this call with a leadership message for each and every one of you. Everybody, welcome to the call, Mr. Patrick Mays, everybody. I'm unmute myself. Hey, guys, great to be on here tonight. Jay, way to go, buddy. Super proud of you, man. Love that story about you know, persistence. How many of us here got affected? He had the text message. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I'm looking at his text message. I love how he kept that accountability and he never quit. And you know, Jay, because of that, you're an inspiration to all of us here tonight. I love this technology because we got Mike in with 24 points and then we got to be here to celebrate you hitting uh, regional director. And we're so fired up to be here. We just got off our our, our basic call or our training call. And then I told him in the end, we're all going to merge together tonight uh, for a special first of the month. Everybody together. We got Jeff and Melissa. We got Ken and Susie Potter. We got Alejandra. We got RVPs on here, RDs on here, lots of ETLs on here. And we got over 155 people on here, guys. And, you know, I'm so thankful for this technology. 
this technology completely changed our entire business. And, and you know, this has been such a big blessing for us. And for those of you that are less than 90 days old in ACN, you just got involved in a company that we went from riding a horse to getting in a car. And you're not going to know what it feels like to have all kinds of saddle bruises and, you know, what happens when your horse missteps or what it feels like to have to put a shoe on or stop to feed the horse. You know, you got involved in this business now where you're involved with the car just came out. And, you know, even today, to be able to do multiple presentations today on this technology and just realize you guys are pioneers. Look, nobody was using Zoom to build their business before the last 90 days. Nobody was doing trainings like we're doing today for the, uh, before the last 90 days. So you're getting involved in our opportunity at a time in history that we've never experienced. You know, I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I used to live in Pittsburgh, New York, Philadelphia, Boston, Massachusetts, Charlotte, North Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina, South Florida. And the reason I did is because I wanted to help the people that were getting involved. And I couldn't help them on a telephone call. But with Zoom technology, guys, we can sit here and we can build the world from the comfort of our homes. We can go on vacation. We can still look. You could be on vacation right now, Jay, doing what you're doing here right now. Whether you're in your hotel suite or whether you're in your home office, it does not matter because of this technology. And, you know, guys, when we talk about a system, and that's what, you know, I'm so proud of this team because we pivoted. You know what I mean? Like, look, we saw there was a problem. That's what entrepreneurs do. When it starts raining, what's an entrepreneur do? Start selling uh, umbrellas. Yes or no? It's like, okay, great. It's raining out. That doesn't mean there's a less opportunity. It just means it's a different opportunity. And so the fact that you guys and, and some of us, you know, uh, took a little longer to embrace change than others, but it doesn't matter. You're all here. And for us to go from one Zoom to another, if we would have done that 30 days ago, we would have lost half the people. Does that make sense? We would have went from our, our past Zoom to get on here 30 days ago. I'd have said, to Alejandro, listen, we probably lost 50% of everybody. They're still back in the old Zoom trying to figure out where everybody just went. So with that being said, I want to talk about tonight and in, in, in how special tonight is on a couple different levels. One, for all of us to be together. You know, the fact that we can all be together. You know, there's a, a book that I have read uh, so many times, uh, Think and Grow Rich. And in this book, talks about what Jay talked about, persistence. That's an entire chapter. There's only 13 chapters in this book, and one of those chapters is persistent. The second part of the uh, second chapter talks about masterminding. That's what we're doing here tonight. We're masterminding. You're going to hear somebody say something that's going to give you an idea that's going to shoot your business in a whole other direction. You know, the third thing they talk about in this book is specialized knowledge. See, that's what we're learning. How many of us agree we're learning specialized knowledge? We're learning specialized knowledge on how to build a business online, how to, how to you know, train people online, how to get customers online, how to go out and build something online. That's specialized knowledge. Look, guess what? Last year, there wasn't people doing what we're doing here now, but now there is. So let's talk about you know, just the system. The first thing the system says is book Zooms. You know, I don't know how many guys, how many, Melissa, how many Zooms did you guys book? 103. 103. So they've got 103 people that said, put me in coach. And that number is going to change every 48 hours. Because what we're noticing is that people are booking Zooms, like literally, like, can you do one tomorrow at 10? Can you do one tomorrow at three? Can you do one Sunday at two? Can you do one Monday at two o'clock? So we know that that number is going to keep changing and the whoever books the most Zooms wins. It's a numbers game. Number, number two is what did we do is we talk about the compensation plan. And then we recognize who has the most Zooms. You know, we had Richard Brewer. He has 10 Zooms. He, his name was read just a minute ago. Pastor Leonard has over 10 Zooms. His name was read just a minute ago. If you look at the people's names that were read, these people all have the most amount of Zooms. So that's why they're leading is just because they have more Zooms than other people. They just took it upon themselves to book as many Zooms. And, you know, listening to Jay Fest to talk about, hey, he did 29, pres he, he recruited 29 people. Now, Jay, I know you, your first 29 people you talked to didn't sign up, that you probably had to talk to 100 to get 29. You probably had to talk to 150 to get 29. So what that tells me is that whoever shows it to the most people wins. And then we talk about the compensation plan. Look, this compensation plan, you know, I had Alejandro on the phone with a very big earner uh, that's with a product-based company. And here's what he said. 
if I stop recruiting, my check plummets. He's like, literally, I could go from making 10, 20, 30,000 a month to literally down to hundreds of dollars because people don't keep buying the product unless I keep recruiting them to buy the product. He was like, I see what you guys are doing. And I have 5,000 local long distance customers I get paid on today. 5,000. Now, there's some of you on the line here today that don't even know what local long distance is, right? I know there's some, I know Shayla has no idea that there was, look, that there was something before this. How many of us agree with that? Most people know, like, what? You used to talk with a phone on the wall? Like, who talked? So was it limiting? Like, it wasn't mobile? Yeah, you could, you could write a big yellow banana phone on the wall of your mom's kitchen, and I still have 5,000 of those customers I make money on today. I don't even know who they call for customer care. I got no idea. Like if somebody called me and go, Pat, who do I call for customer care? I don't know. Like I don't know who you call. But oh, here's what I do know. It direct deposits into my bank account every month. I can tell you that much. I can tell you that it shows up with a direct deposit. So when you look at our compensation plan, you'll keep yourself up at night when you start doing the numbers. Like literally, when you just start adding up where you can be, imagine if Jay Festa was on your third level and you're getting 4% of his 200 accounts. Or, or, or Bill Simons is on your third level and he's got 200 personal accounts that you're making money on every 30 days. And you, you weren't there screen sharing with people on being an ID Seal customer. You weren't there explaining to them why they should do you a favor, 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 but you're getting paid on those customers. So think about that for a second how big that is. Then what did we do? We did testimonials. Why? Because when we first started, and, Je and Jeff will tell you, when we first started, we'd let people do a testimonial. It was a thankimonial, a trainimonial, a bitchimonial, you know, a celebrationimonial. You know what I mean? It was like a Grammy award for somebody who wanted to give a political and all kinds of speeches over the fact that they got 10 customers. And then it was like, well, let's train them on this part. And then once we trained them on it, it was like, great. And then people got affected by someone's testimonial. But think about it. If we didn't train that, imagine what kind of train wreck this would be if you put 20 people on a Zoom and people just came on and said whatever they thought you would want to hear. And in the end, the people that are listening are like, I don't think this is something I want to do. But then the final piece to our puzzle is training people on how to have a good Zoom. And I'm going to share my slides with everybody because I want you just to get in the mindset of here's how we train people to have a good Zoom. And part of that training uh, we're going to talk about here tonight is so vitally important uh, for our success. See, the first thing you got to remember is when somebody signs into ACN, their excitement is high and their fear is low. Every day that goes by that you don't get them to take action, their fear starts to grow up and their excitement starts to go down. How many of us experience that? And pretty soon their fear is greater than their excitement and they will not take any action. They could be living next door to a senior vice president that could sign up an ACN and shatter every record that we ever had, but they're never going to know because they're never going to invite them to come take a look. So just remember when people sign in, they got, a, they got an expiration date, meaning if you don't get them moving, and for those of you that have ever had like a surgery or, or you had like a knee replacement or you know what I mean? You know, the first thing they do when you get a knee replacement, make you stand up literally. I mean, they, they make you stand straight up because they know if you don't start moving all of a sudden, all of that, all that, that, that cartridge cartilage and all that other stuff starts to tighten up and pretty soon you can't move. So we got to remember when people come in, you got to take action. Don't celebrate at the application. Don't celebrate you got an IBO. All you, like when somebody signs up in your business, all it means it's time to start to work. If nobody signs up in your business, you don't have to work. But if somebody signs up in your business, it's not time to celebrate, it's time to go to work. And we got to help them take action. Now, what do we do? The first thing we do is we talk about some of the launch parties. And I know you guys have been doing launch parties. And, you know, one of the topics I had for the ETL portion of uh, our call earlier is talk about promoting. Like, look, the best promoters make the most money. The best promoter. And here's what I'm finding is that if you don't promote from after that PVZ to come to that nightly 8 p.m. training, here's what I'll share with you. If you say things like, it happens every night. Well, guess what? There's no value in saying it happens every night. You got to be like, listen, wait till tonight. Wait till you get on the Zoom tonight. And then what we found is if you can get them from the Zoom to the training, you're going to sign people up. Now, once you get into the training, guess what the next goal is? 
get them to leadership. Get a, hey, listen, we got to get you CQ. We got to get a Zoom out of the way so you get invited to leadership because when they get on here with us tonight, how many of us agree they become titanium? All of a sudden, Jay's testimonial affects you, yes or no. All of a sudden, hearing people talk about what they've been able to do affects you and you become no proof. But if you can't get them from that Zoom to that training and that training to that leadership, it's not because they don't want to do it. It's just because you're not great at promoting. So you got to become a master promoter. And if you're taking notes tonight, write that down. You know, think about it. On a scale of one to 10, how are you when it comes to promoting? A 10 means I get it on it, I sell it, I make sure they show up at the 8 p.m. training, or I suggest it. One means I don't say anything, 10 means I'm, I'm fanatical. So figure out where you are and rate yourself so that you know how to improve that particular part of your business. If you become a great promoter, and what we found is the more they spend time with us, the more they start thinking like us, the more they start acting like us, and the more they start to go down the road of success. Now, what we found is that you got to coach everybody up before their Zoom. You got to coach them up. And how you coach them up is you go over the invite. Do you look at other ways of making money? Do you look at other ways of making money? I think today more than ever, 30, 30 million people unemployed in our country. 30 million. These are, these are mind-boggling numbers right now. You know what I mean? So I can't imagine calling somebody right now and saying, do you look at other ways of making money outside of what you do? And them saying, absolutely not. How many of us agree out of curiosity they'll look? out of the fact that they're just un, unsure about the future of their business, whatever business that is, whether they're the employee or the employer, everybody's a little bit nervous right now, yes or no. So we want to we want to remember, we got a solution. If you had the cure to financial cancer, would you keep it to yourself or would you tell everybody you know? You'd probably tell everybody you know. And, and that's what we have here. So we got to get good at what to say when we get on the phone with somebody. Do you look at other ways of making money? Absolutely, great, so do I. And let me explain why I'm looking. Man, I don't know if you know this, but you know, my 401's looking like a 201. You know what I mean? I'm concerned about my retirement. I'm concerned about my parents. I'm concerned about my kid's college fund. I'm concerned about, you know, whatever that might be. And I started looking for some new opportunity, but let me tell you who I met. I met an unbelievable couple. Their name is uh, Ken and Susie Potter. These individuals are multiple business owners. They're super successful individuals, and they're sharing with me an idea that can help my family financially. And I'd love to invite you to come meet Susie and Ken. Have you ever been on Zoom? You have? Great. You know how it works then, and I'm going to send you a link. Uh, make sure you show up. Matter of fact, they're such professionals, they're probably going to give you a confirmation call. See, see, here's what I'm telling you. If you notice what I did, do you look at other ways of making money? Great. So do I. Here's why I'm looking, but let me tell you who I met. Edification means to make a big deal about, to talk good about. And, and here's what I found. When I say a lot of nice things about somebody, number one, you're affecting the person you're talking to, yes or no. When you say things like, let me tell you about Melissa Street. She's a multi-business owner. She's having a tremendous amount of success. And she told me on Wednesday at six o'clock, she's going to show me what she's doing. And I'd love to invite you to meet her. Have you ever used Zoom before? See, when I ask them that question, their mind immediately goes from should I go to yes, I have or no, I haven't. And if they say yes, I have, then it's like, oh, well, you know how it works then. I'll send you a code. I'll send you a link. I'll see you at six o'clock and she'll probably give you a call or somebody from her office just to be able to introduce herself to you or remind you of the upcoming event tomorrow at 6 p.m. And that's all you have to do. But what I'm finding, when I ask somebody, have you ever used Zoom before? They have to answer that question. And when they say, no, I haven't, I said, well, wait till you see how Zoom works. You're going to love it. But what I'm finding is most people say, what? Yes, I have. When you go, yes, I have, then you're immediately like, well, you know how it works then. I'll send you a link. I can't wait to see you on it. And now all of a sudden, I'm just assuming the sale, yes or no. I'm like just assuming you're going to be it there at that point. You look at other ways of making money? Yes, you do. Great. So do I. Here's why I'm looking. Let me tell you who I met and build the credibility of your presenter. Now, who to call? This is leadership. We've got, you know, 150 people on here tonight. And, you know, here's what I found is that these are the type of people you want to go after. Business owners, people that have done network marketing in the past, or people that have been in the real estate space. They're the three top people you should be talking to. 
They are the three top people that you should be looking for. Every business owner in America is rethinking their business. If you owned a hotel right now, how many of us agree you're not real excited about buying another hotel, right? If you own a Marriott in downtown Las Vegas, how many of us agree you're not excited about another Marriott in Las Vegas? If you own a bowling alley in Hartford, Connecticut, how many of us agree you're not pumped up to go buy another bowling alley? If you owned a restaurant in downtown Manhattan, New York, you're not excited about buying another restaurant. So every business owner is rethinking their entire business. Matter of fact, we're in Pittsburgh right now. They actually had a, a, a 50 car stop on the bridge in Pittsburgh and demand that they don't pay rent this month. Now, could you imagine being a landlord in Pittsburgh and you see 50 people stopping on a bridge and protesting that they have to pay rent this month? Now, how many of us agree you're not real excited about buying another building in Pittsburgh? If every one of your tenants are sitting out in the street with a sign right now saying we don't want to pay rent. So the point that I'm making is these are people that are more open-minded now than they ever have been. And so your job is to get in front of them. But if I'm a new rep in your team, I'm not thinking business owners. If I'm a new rep on your team, I'm not thinking real estate professionals. If I'm a new rep on your team, I'm not thinking people that have been in network marketing before. And just to give you an idea of what we're talking about, and I don't know how this works, but I'm, Melissa, I, you can coach me up on this part. No, I'm just going to send a quick survey poll out. So you guys are going to see it. You're going to respond and then we'll get to see the response of it. So here we go. You're going to get a little pop up. You see a little pop up. So check whatever applies to you. We'll give it, you know, 30 seconds or so for people to respond. Oh, I might have accidentally ended it. Hang on one second. Let me do this one more time. <laughs> I apologize. Oh, this is great. Still coming in. 81, 89, 91. We'll see who's asleep here in a minute. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 100. Oh, wait. Well, we had four four people sleeping on our call that I couldn't even wake up to bring. Somebody's sleeping for sure. All right. But that's well, amazing. So let's share the response here, Mr. Mazer. Mm -hmm. Share. Can you, you share the it? results? Does everybody see it? Okay, yeah. you guys are all. So Carrie Doll, you see it? Raise your hand. Okay, there you go. Good. That's my little, I can see who. So if you look at this, we have 61% of everybody that's here tonight has been a business owner or self-employed at one point. We have 35% have done network marketing or have some experience. We have 20% have been in real estate or real estate professional. So if you look at that, 60, literally 80% of every leader falls into one of those three categories, eight out of 10. So if I'm gonna go out recruiting, and I'm gonna go look for people that are gonna do well at this business, can we agree that's the category of people we need to go for? Business owners, network marketing experience, and real estate professionals. And, and I love that because now you see for yourself how we can take a poll. Now, how many of you, that's the first time you ever seen a poll on Zoom? Yeah, wait, what, what else don't we know, right? This is what's so great about this is you can sort of see how powerful this technology is. And thank you, uh, Melissa, uh, for finding that out and bringing that up. But I love this technology. And when you think about, you know, what I talked about is, look, you fall into these three categories, you know, and now I go confirmation list. After Jay just spoke, how many of us see the value of a confirmation list? How many regional directors, and I show Jay, I have them in my phone as SVP. You know what I mean? So I set a screenshot on my phone. I was like, Jay, I, I, when I met you, I just put SVP next to your name. So how many SVPs did you miss in your team because you didn't get a confirmation list? You know what I mean? Because you never got the names and numbers of everybody because they need that. If they don't get a confirmation list, it's zero to 40%. With a confirmation list, 40 to 60% show up. And then it's the, it's the website checklist. Hey, make sure that uh, the webinar checklist, make sure you have a great backdrop. You're going to be the one introducing me. You're going to be the one, you know, thanking everybody coming. Don't, don't talk about no shows. Have some great light. Make sure you're smiling ear to ear. This is a 20 minute in and out. And then we're going to do the breakout room in the end. And how many of you love the breakout room? 
right? Where you now get a chance to say one, two, or three and segment them. And the ones and twos, you're promoting training. And if you're promoting training to the ones and twos, single date time, you do a Zoom, I'm telling you your business is going to explode. You're going to explode because you haven't experienced 2009 like Jeff and I have. Like you haven't experienced what it feels like to go into packed living rooms because everybody's looking for something. You guys haven't experienced what it's like of people saying, can I bring two friends with me? Hey, can I bring my brother with me? Can I bring my cousin? Like that was like automatic stuff. Like people were bringing other people with them because they were in need of looking for something that they could actually help their family. Now, here's the other thing. If you're on here tonight, you got to get your own Zoom. Like this is the future. You know what I mean? This is going to be something that all of you guys are going to be extremely, uh, uh, you're going to be extremely proficient with. You're going to become a Zoom professional. So make sure you have your own Zoom account. You know, make sure that you get that because look, as you start to develop and build, you don't want to wait and say, hey, Jeff, what's the code? Or hey, Susie Potter, what's the code? Or hey, Alejandro, what's the code? You want to have your own. Does that make sense? Like you want to think like an RD before you are an RD. You want to think like an ETL before you're an ETL. You want to think like an RVP before you're an RVP. And, and how you do it is just creating your own account. And this is something that, again, has, has served us so well. We had a record-breaking March. We had a record-breaking April. We did more reps in April than we did in March. We did more customers in April than we did in March. I know, Jeff, you guys the same way. I know Ken and Susie, the same thing. You know, we're trending up. Alejandra exploded with points in, in the month of April. And it's just because we're attracting better people. And you're going to get better people because you now have a better menu of people that are looking than maybe 2019. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, for some of you, you're getting involved in a time where it's going to be exaggerated success. You know what I mean? Like you're going to have more success. And some of you are going to have success that if you would have signed in in 2019 or 2018, you wouldn't have been able to do what you're going to do in 2020. Just because of number one, the technology. Number two, the whole country is now adopting this way of doing business. Look, I'm seeing, I went to church on Zoom now. I'm watching kids. Now think about IV Seal. You know, we talked about this at our RD and above meeting. Listen, everybody's online right now. How many of us agree they need to protect their family? How many of us agree they got their kids on Zoom right now? They better get ID seal for their kids. Eight out of 10 kids are going to have their information compromised before they turn 18, just because of the amount of people that are online right now. And so to, to what, you know, Bill said, it's just the opening conversation. Hey, look, you guys are online more than you ever have been before. Great. You know what I mean? Let's talk about getting you some ID seal and getting some protection for you and your family. So guys, we're so fired up for what's happening right now. I know Noah here almost took the screen over. Noah actually is, is, is he's, he's literally a handful of points away from RVP. He's a handful of points away from RVP. And his team, I, I got a text from one of his team members are like, I'm not going to be at leadership tonight because I'm going to go get customer points so I can help Noah go RVP. And that just says a lot about a team. And, and we're going to do the same thing for all of you, where you're going to have people on your team that are going to do things that Noah's team's out there doing now. Like they, they love their leader so much that they'll go out and get more points to help their leader hit a position over the fact that they could have done it for themselves at any time. You know, it's sort of like what Jay said. Once I started seeing the, the end zone, all of a sudden urgency started to kicking in. You know, I like to see it's almost like a boxer. How many of you ever watch a boxer and maybe the seventh or eighth round and they're, they're a little tired and they're moving slow, but once they see blood, how many all of a sudden when they see blood, it's like, where did this guy come from? And he just starts show, throwing the punches left and right because you get such a, a jolt of energy when you see the finish lines right in front of you. And, you know, guys, I know we pray for this team every single every single night. I know we do this at the highest levels of our team. And, you know, what we want to do tonight is just to have a little fun. So, you know, we're going to conclude the, the leadership portion of the evening. And then we're going to all hang out and let everybody tell their, their, their most fun Zoom story. So if you've got a fun Zoom story, we're going to let you unmute yourself here a little later and, and tell us a fun Zoom story. But before we do that, just because of all the things we've been through, you know, the good and the bad all at the same time. I mean, we've been through some of the greatest things that I've ever experienced in my ACN career and, and some of the most tragic situations where people are getting sick and all kinds of, of negative stuff's happening. It's like, 
you know, so much great stuff's happening and there's almost so much bad stuff's happening all at the same time. And, you know, I think it's so appropriate now just because we're, we're, we're in a season where we, we should be thankful for what we have. And we should be thankful that all of us are together. And I'd love to have, you know, Ken and Susie Potter just, you know, lead us in a prayer so we can end the leadership portion, pray as an organization, be thankful that we're all together here tonight. And then when they're done praying, we're going to open it up and let you guys have a good time. You want to get an adult beverage, nobody drive. As long as you're not driving, you can hang out and we can spend a couple minutes together. I love hanging out with you guys. The only thing I miss is hanging out with you guys. That's the only, if, you, if there's one thing I could tell you, I tell Alejandra, I just miss hanging out with you guys. You know what I mean? We have so much fun when we're together. So we're going to do as much as we can virtually until we can do it physically. So with that, you know, Ken and Susie, you're such great prayer warriors. We love you two so much. Uh, I believe our success is because we put God first. Like I believe that we are where we are today, that people are coming into our business around the world today. We're attracting some of the greatest human beings today uh, because of how, how we've really put God first at every level of our team. And I just want to thank you guys for always being there to pray for us. And I'm going to let you guys take it from here. Okay. Um, oh, Father God, we are so grateful, Lord. We are so grateful that you knew, Lord, you knew before you even created the earth that each one of us, um, would come together right now, that we would be together to support each other, to help each other, to build a business together, and, and to have an ACN family together. Lord, we are so grateful for the leadership that you've put together for this team that wants to glorify you in everything that we do. So Lord, I just, I just um, put before you, Lord, that each and every person on this call, Lord, just we lift them up. We just pray that, that, there's, that they are about to bless so many people, Lord, and that you would go before us and just open doors so that we can do that, Lord. We want this call to be full of leaders that love you, Lord, and that want to do nothing more but to glorify your name by helping people through this business. And everybody said, amen. Amen. <laughs> awesome. Amen. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate that. And you know, now I'm going to open it up. Anybody?